I'm back. Well, I'm back, said Sam at the end of Return of the King. I was, uh, you know, like 30 seconds ago, it was like this. 30 seconds ago, we were going to do a sound test, and Wendell started doing the actual intro, and we were like, <laughs> no, we gotta, we got to do a sound test first. <laughs> I'm asleep at my desk. You know why? Because I'm still 12 hours off, and it's totally sleep time. It's definitely sleep time. Oh. Don't oh. listen to my emails. They definitely heard that. that the <laughs> mics are mounted to the desk. Burr. Sorry. Listen, we're actually recording this at a weird time. We're recording it during a work day. So yeah. emails don't stop during the work day. But that was a bridesmaid text message, be honest. No. I, I haven't looked at it, but I'm pretty sure it's someone emailing me. What's Marty doing in the glass of Tide Paws? I don't know. Well, you know, he sometimes you know you just need a little drink, a little pick-me-up in the middle of the day. You just... That's what I do. I bust open a pod. I left my uh, I left my Star Trek action figures up here. My Lego Star Trek action figures, oh, I yeah. should say, so, so we could use them somehow. But you you don't care. We just need to get on with the news. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't remember what today's news is. Uh, the we're, date. S- we're starting with what's the thirteenth, right? Yeah. Tuesday the thirteenth. Uh, we're starting with security. We've got some science. We've got one crypto story. Remember what the other stuff is? Hardware, maybe? Yeah, hardware. Oh, and there's software. a lot of hardware. Because Computex. That's you, what's in the story. You have watched all of our Computex coverage, have, haven't you? Because if you haven't, you should feel bad. I mean, I know that no one cares, but you should totally watch our Computex coverage so we can go next year. Which I should also say thanks to Azrock and Fractal because they sponsored the trip and their support is very much appreciated in getting us to Computex to actually do stuff at Computex. It's a lot easier on our wallet. We'll say that when uh, we don't have to spend (laughs) all of our money. We do use some of the money, but a lot of that's covered by them. Yeah. Almost. uh, It's close. Well, not Not quite a hundred percent. Yeah. But it was very, very appreciated. So although this, this year Computex, like if you were going to skip a Computex, this year probably would have been the year to skip, but you don't know that because companies are cagey about announcing stuff and not announcing stuff. They want you to get hyped. Yeah. They, they definitely do. And sometimes they'll mislead you, as we'll find out later in the program. But for now, you know who's not misleading you? Pure VPN. <laughs> that is not what this story is about. <laughs> yeah, this is the this wrong is one. V- VPN filter. Yeah, okay. This is the malware that's this been is, infecting yeah. routers the world over. And it turns <laughs> out it's infecting a lot more than we thought. Didn't they think it was just like the one or two brands, and now it's like pretty much all of them? Pretty much everybody. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much it. Uh, there's a table of uh, routers here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Asus devices, D-Link, Huawei, Linksys, Microtik. Microtik is a surprising one because Microtik is not really a consumer devices brand. Like you don't run out to Walmart and buy the Microtik. Uh, Netgear, QNAP, TP-Link. TP-Link is a really popular brand. Ubiquity. Uh, Ubiquity, again, that's sort of a commercial brand, so this is a little surprising. Um... I guess just goes to show you you should be running FreeBSD or Linux or OpenBSD or whatever on all of your core and edge firewalls because, Jesus Christ, why is this even a thing, people? Upgrade your firmware is really the only way to go, but it can survive a lot of attempts to get rid of it, so you might just be screwed. Unfortunate. That was the perfect intro for the other VPN story that's in here somewhere, but we'll get to it. It's fine. Speaking of things that you need to update or upgrade, your Supermicro server's firmware. Now, this is sort of... This firmware... That, so, the firmware vulnerability is like... It's not direct root control, but there are weaknesses in the firmware that will allow you to upgrade arbitrary files and also downgrade the firmware. And so, like, you could downgrade the firmware to a version of the firmware that's vulnerable and then attack that remotely. So, if the server itself is compromised... Plus, you have access to whatever port the management controller is running on, then you could be in bad bad shape. Well, the problem is the CPU has access to certain parts of the firmware. So yeah. you don't need physical access. You don't need to get to the firmware through traditional means. If you can just take control of the CPU, then you can affect the firmware. But this probably isn't really a big deal for remote execution. Yeah. So you would need to get into it some other way. You've probably already got all the access you want at that point, but still, you know, embarrassing. <laughs> Here's a hint. Don't put your IPMI on the public internet, for God's sakes. You should already know not to do that. You know what else you should know not to do? Hard-coded passwords in your 
devices. <laughs> we're reporting on this one. Cisco has removed yet another. This is the fourth time that there's been a hard coded account in Cisco. Now, I think this one is the least serious one that we've seen so far. This was an SNMP hard coded uh, community string. So the the leak, the vulnerability here is on the the SNMP simple network management protocol. So I don't think this is as severe as some of the other ones we reported, which was basically like, oh, here's a hard-coded password for remote root access. But this would give you access to sensitive information from the device. Every device that communicates with this wide area device. Yeah. So, but they have already fixed it. If you upgrade, you're okay. But it's definitely <laughs> just, embarrassing because... Because Cisco... Cisco, they found... The last leak was from somebody else... Or from them. Like, the first one was somebody else. And then Cisco's like, ooh, we better check. And they found a bunch. And they released that. But then again, someone else found this one. So, not good enough, Cisco security team. I can't tell you how many meetings I've been sitting in on that basically amounted to, let's buy Cisco because nobody ever got fired for buying Cisco. And you see stuff like this, and then it's like, well, you know, OpenBSD didn't have this problem. It's like you roll your own infrastructure with OpenBSD. This, this would not even have been a thing because audits. The people sitting in those meetings, though, <laughs> they, they know the name Cisco. You're paying for the brand at that point. <laughs> uh, 92 million account DNLs for the DNA testing service MyHeritage. DNLs? You're feeling it. What now? What did I say? Did you I said, say it wrong? Said DNLs. Details. Sorry. Oh, you should have heard me stumbling over titles yesterday. So you're, you're in the clear still. And you have an excuse. I'm, yeah. It's like I'm definitely not the clear head. The clear head. <laughs> English so th hard. This is an Israeli uh, Ancestry.com clone. And they've been hacked. So all of your Ancestry details. They got the hashes for the passwords, but they did salt them. So they're not too worried about that. But... The big worry here is things like, you know, police using DNA. I don't know if this is one of the companies that stored the actual sequence or just stored the ancestry. I think the article also said that there was no payment details that were leaked, that it was just all the other data, yeah. literally everything else. But on top of, because we saw how police are using the DNA websites to catch you if you do crimes, terrible, terrible idea to use one of these services. Please. It's not that important. <laughs> But I need to know if I'm purebred. You are not from royalty. <laughs> Just live with it. We're investigating war crimes, and we have detected that you have German heritage. Oh, we need to no. ask you a few questions. <laughs> uh, wait, it goes there immediately. The TSB admits 1,300 accounts hit by uh, IT fraud meltdown. Oh, this was the one... Reading this story just made me infuriated because apparently all these people are like losing money out of their account and there's over like 90,000 customer complaints or something crazy like that. There's some like this bank has no IT security at all and people are freaking out. They have and, like 5 million customers too. Yeah. Like so, it's not well, a small bank. They switched to a new IT system which had some sort of major flaw and once that was discovered, it was just free for all. The, the fraudsters going in. And some people described, because of the volume of calls, they didn't like step up the service to meet that. So they described how they were on the phone with waiting, you know, for the, the IT fraud department and watching the money disappear out of their account. Wow. And no one ever picked up the phone. So the, the FCA, which is the regulatory agency that oversees this kind of thing, has uh, there are rules about this. The amount of the fine is infinite. <laughs> they can choose whatever amount they want for for this much Ooh. of a screw up they can just destroy the company if they want to. <laughs> well there's a lot of people that were complaining in here that have lost their entire retirement account and it's like yeah. they're just waiting on the bank to re refund them some money or reimburse them or oh I've, I've destroyed our screws wait a minute the screws were not updated oh never mind they it's were the same updated. week yeah. Uh, yeah and the they claim that they're going to guarantee all the money but so far, a lot of people have reported that they've been offered 100 pounds as recompense for oh. not having access to their money for weeks. So, well, and you know, that's fine for losing, you know, your life savings. That's well, <laughs> presumably, that. presumably they're going to get it back. But so far, none of them have access to that promised money. So, yeah, this is uh, it's is, my money, and I need it now. <laughs> <laughs> how could this? How could this happen? How, how, you know, banks are supposed to be some of the most secure. No, this this is just. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of when you look at the 
the bank to bank systems, those are some of the most insecure because they don't ever want to update them because they, they can't agree on anything. And those old systems are what they default to. <laughs> the old systems are held together by five toothpicks and an angry badger. <laughs> this is why my granny kept money in a freezer. <laughs> the Great Depression lessons. Uh, Ticketfly. 27 million accounts are compromised during malicious attacks. So if you've used Ticketfly, I've got some bad news for you. <laughs> yeah. it's. I, again, I don't think they got payment details necessarily. No. I think they did get password hashes. They got names and email addresses and physical addresses, but no credit card information. But yeah, if you've used Ticketfly... Maybe don't. Which, I've never heard of tri- Ticketfly. Usually it's Ticketmaster around here. Everyone uses I think Ticketfly is one of those like aftermarket sites, right? Like uh, StubHub. Mm, yeah. Oh, or maybe okay. it's a Euro thing. Now, we're only mentioning that because in a few weeks we want to report that some horrible draconian punishment has been exacted on Ticketfly. Meanwhile, still nothing has happened with Equifax. Nothing will happen to them, so... <laughs> And here's the story that I thought we were leading with, but because I'm half asleep. Private Internet Access has a no-logging claim, and once again, it's been proven true in court. This is kind of a good story. It's a happy story. This is a good one. It's kind of a... Well, the FBI still still got their guy. But But they had, like, a lot of evidence. Yeah. Yeah. But they did testify that they tried every way in the world. And we've talked about... I think you mentioned PureVPN. Mm -hmm. That was the one where... Once the subpoenas showed up, they were like, oh, yeah, we do have those logs. Here you go. You can have them. But private internet access, they stood by their guns, and they were like, listen, I can't give you what you want because we literally don't keep it. All I have is an email address, and that could be anything. And if you'd like to sign up for private internet access, you should go to level one com slash support and use our affiliate link. Full disclosure. Which- <laughs> Sponsored. And I, we used to have pure VPN, which I, I hope we removed. It might still be there. We were totally going to. We yeah. probably should. We also had Tunnel Bear, but Tunnel Bear is no more the because McAfee. I mean, yeah. it's just... The VPN game, It's you know, they just buy them up and destroy them. Yeah. Well, we can't we can't change the past, but at least in our PFSense video, like we had, like, setting up your PFSense, we covered three different VPN providers because odds are one of them will... I think PIA was one of them. Yeah, PIA was this, definitely one of them. This really is, like... They're, they will give you an email address, but the only reason they use that email address is to mail you your credentials, and you can use a throwaway email if you want. Plus, you can sign up, the greatest thing about this, with gift cards. And cryptocurrency. So, well, cryptocurrency can be tracked back to you, but yeah, a Walmart true. gift card <laughs> paid with cash? <laughs> uh, one of the pieces of evidence cited in here was uh, a, a coffee shop near where the person lives, and that was just like another piece of corroborating evidence for well, everything else. He logged in from his dad's IP address. Yeah. So maybe <laughs> smart enough to use the VPN, but not smart enough to always use the VPN. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, once again, it's it's a situation of if you're going to commit crime, don't use a VPN. Pro criminal tip. Oh, don't don't commit well, crime at all. But if you're gonna commit crime, do use the VPN. I mean, it, it's just don't expect that to save you. Yeah, that's that's the one layer of the onion of crime committing security. How do we? It's like pro criminal tip. Use at least seven versions of private internet access. <laughs> one per day that you commit your crime. I don't know. Yeah, figure out a way to get an anonymous internet connection, which is a lot harder than you think. So. This, uh, this next one, I think, is, is hyperbole, but we'll cover it anyway. Experts warn it's only a matter of time before hackers hijack a plane mid-flight. This originally ran in the sun to give you an indication of that this, <laughs> this might not be completely reputable. But well, I, I don't think New York Post is a paragon, of, but what is these yeah. days? <laughs> but the, uh, actually, there are no details exactly of how this guy did it, but they've confirmed the airline companies are like, yeah, we figured it out. I like that that won't close. And uh, pop-up. Oh, it's killed the browser. But he used radio frequencies somehow to get... The plane was just parked. Oh, that was a Homeland Security thing. And uh, he got in, and he checked his radio stuff through baggage, and they were like, oh, this is fine. He used that to gain some kind of access to the plane, but it's a complete top-secret thing how that was done. So he's claiming that in doing that, you could risk all flights from now on. But like you say... Maybe a little bit of a scare tactic here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, at some point in the future, the free computer that's embedded in the bag of 
M&Ms could be used to compromise a plane. I've never gotten a bag. What size bag of M&Ms do you have to get to get the free computer? Well, I mean, I'm saying in the future, they're going to go from RFID tags in the bag of M&Ms to like a full computer, and then somebody's going to hack that and use or that to take over a plane. In the plushies. They yeah, could, it might be like 2133, but it'll happen eventually. If they bought them at scale, they could maybe do original Raspberry Pis. And like the community size bag, the 50 pound bag of M&M's. <laughs> they could advertise that on there. Most people would be like, oh, raspberry pie flavored M&M? Cool. What, is, what has happened in the browser? I don't know what's happened. <laughs> this is not a story. I'm, I'm somehow. This is, this is just a credit just, card just, ad. Just, what? <laughs> this, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Uh, okay, wait. Uh, that's the, yeah, that's okay. the airplane story. Okay. We're in the so right the, spot. the next there thing is yeah. tech support scammers. Tech support scammers are using victims' webcams to secretly record testimonials for YouTube. This is a level of dumb that this is I, good, this is a good reminder for me as a UX designer that like the levels of dumb I've not even begun to see the bottom. But I <laughs> like, here's what I don't understand about this story. So they got they hacked these people and by convincing them that it was the old like oh you've got a virus you need to call this number and the people who were not savvy enough to not call that number they didn't know what that was. Somehow they made them read a testimonial and they took over their webcam and recorded it and then used that in YouTube videos. But it's literally if, like five layers deep though. Like it's not just, you know, call this number. It's like call this number, install this thing. Yeah. You know, talk to this person and then record like record a script. Well, they thought that it had been fixed because the non-existent virus message went away. But here's here's my problem with it. If they didn't know somebody was listening, why were they reading aloud to themselves when prompted to do so? But it's just... <laughs> <laughs> the questions. The user is always an idiot. And like that's just that terrifies me because I have to design stuff for people like that. My, my takeaway from it was something like... Because they were talking about how the scammers had a fake Adobe support webpage. So like oh, yeah. the scam got started when somebody was having yeah. trouble with some Adobe product and they called them. And so I was thinking... you know, I was sitting there and I was reading that and I was like... Did they, did the scammers like install a pirated version of the Creative Suite or something? And it's like, that's what it's like. Oh, you mean I could get all the Creative Suite for like $9? And then I could see them sing, sitting there saying to their webcam, like, oh, that's amazing. You know, thank you so much for oh, doing that. No, but see, that, the Adobe site, then took them to the You're yeah. Infected site. Yeah, it's think, literally like five layers of steps just to get to this. I think the testimonial was that, like, the Mac Cure site. <laughs> So, but again, maybe they thought they were just recording audio, but they were also recording video. But then I, it's, it's just. It well, like they no said, sense. one of the guys was shirtless. I mean, like you, there's kids in the background in one, and like someone else yeah. is in their bedroom. And it's like. I like how all of us are like, we have to figure out exactly what sequence of steps led to this because this is so it's, dumb. It's more difficult to go through all these steps than just to run a regular virus scan. That's what I'm well, impressed yeah, by. Well, I want to know if, if, that, if there was a guy and he was instructed on his screen, it's like, read this aloud. And he's like, well. That's kind of weird. I don't see why, but okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> all right. Now it's time for hardware news. You, skipped, is, you skipped the story. Did I skip the story? Or did I skip? He's just excited to get to hardware. He's, been chomping at the bed all week. You scrolled errantly. Oh, no. and, this, this and now e you're clicking rapidly. This episode of the news is, can only be lightly edited too, so we have to like entertain you with like, uh, you know, a juggling. Well, we can. I can tell them what this story is without the headline. Okay. This remember. was the evil Chinese hackers. <laughs> They've hacked is it a China this week, not Russia. It's China this week. They've hacked a Navy contractor. So. That's usually the story these days. It's not that you hack the person themselves. You find a contractor who isn't good at security. So they got... Which is all of them. They yeah, got 600 sure. gigabytes of naval warfare and submarine data, which is everything about our new super secret missiles and <laughs> submarine tactics. They've got everything. Wait, is this the new submarine that runs Windows 2000? Because I think I thought that was the old submarine. Uh, I'm not sure they didn't mention the operating system, <laughs> just that it has this new missile that can take down a ship with one hit, and it's super secret, and it's we're real proud of it, and now China has it. Yay, China. Woo. Yeah, so I think that uh, it would be nice if we had some sort of National Institute of Standards and Technology that provided guidance on how to secure your systems properly and was not actually co-opted by the intelligence service duping them into use shitty uh, encryption algorithms like dual elliptic curve. Oh, wait. That's a thing. That's we actually have that because 
dual elliptic curve. Guess who was pushing dual elliptic curve? You? <laughs> you? No, no, no uh, the camera. The yeah. camera. Yeah, no, I was just saying, like, see, we, we told you so. Like, it's like we trusted them. And they were like, they betrayed us because they were not actually interested in making things more secure. They wanted to make things less secure. So, don't you think that the relationship of all of the password back doors, I mean, that's, that's a little too convenient, I think. Okay, I'm, I'm going full tinfoil hat here. Now it's time for hardware, I think. Oh. Yes. So, yeah. So, the, favorite part. the, uh, Computex was last week, and we're still getting our Computex videos out the door this week. Woo! So please enjoy those. Uh, and we covered that in the beginning. So Tom's Hardware has this article. Intel, we forgot to mention the 28 core 5 gigahertz CPU demo was overclocked. I was sitting there. I was sitting there. And I was going through the demo. And in the presentation, it was totally, oh, this is a part. We're going to have it out by the end of the year. It's for gamers and enthusiasts, and it's going to be great. And then they sort of backpedaled on literally everything in the press release. Scroll down and show the, the cooling. <laughs> <laughs> the cooling unit is one horsepower. One horsepower. And also, this is a Xeon socket. This power delivery system is unlike anything else on any Xeon motherboard. Now, I tried to get video of this Wednesday morning. And they had pulled, Intel had pulled all of these demo systems Wednesday morning and, and Wednesday afternoon they were back but none of the systems had the crazy cooling system anymore but they also wouldn't let you run any kind of benchmark or performance things or, or really anything to see if it was running at 5 gigahertz as they demoed in the press release like on stage they were like look it's running at 5 gigahertz on all 28 cores and it really was running at all 5 gigahertz on all 28 cores but it took a one horsepower cooling system to do it well everyone has that right that's <laughs> it's fine. I think the cooling system draws way more power than the, even that CPU at that clock ever would. Yeah. So you're doubling, at least doubling, probably more, probably more like tripling your power consumption with this thing. They have since admitted that it was all a sham. <laughs> they said we forgot to mention it. Yeah. <laughs> we forgot to mention it. We conveniently forgot to tell you that we this doesn't actually work. We spent the entire day hiding this cooling system. And uh, Tom's Hardware mentions how loud it is. So they liken it to an out, like an old outdoor air conditioner system, like that level of noise. So they had to sound dampen somehow to keep that out of the mic. So they must have spent 70% of the time setting this up, dealing with the cooler, and yet they forgot to mention it. Yeah, yeah, I, this is not, there's no way they forgot. And it, it, the whole setup actually looks like an ordinary tower computer. And they had drilled the bottom of the case or something to have the cooling lines go out of the computer in sort of a concealed way. <laughs> into so. the floor, like into the stage. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, because it had to be far enough away that you couldn't hear it. Yeah, so it, well, everything came out on rollers, so it had to be part of like the rolly contraption. But when I saw that on stage, it was like, no, this is not, this is not a real thing. This, this is not a real thing at all. The hardware world has taken the page out of the game <laughs> world where it's like, <laughs> Just, let's show you footage of the game that has nothing to do with the game we're making just pre-rendered footage isn't this exciting so now we're getting that with the processors we should also mention that the processor that that's based on is a xeon processor so this is not like it's a new processor or a new process or a new product in development or anything like that they literally just took one of the most most expensive cps that they make it's ten thousand dollars yeah it's about a ten thousand dollar xeon and overclocked the bejesus out of it and i'll tell you right now no data center on Earth. There is not a data center operator on planet Earth that is interested in this CPU because it, like, the power delivery system on that motherboard was well over a thousand watts. There is nobody in the data center that is interested in a server CPU that uses that much power in this day and age. The whole reason that there's Xeon like 2670 and 2680 V1, V2 CPUs on eBay by the thousands is because data centers have been shedding those CPUs because even those CPUs use too much power. So I mean, that should tell you something. So, the very next day, AMD had their press release, and AMD actually demoed a real processor that was running under pretty normal conditions, an air cooler, a tower air cooler. Now, that was like five pounds of metal. It was a substantial tower air, tower air cooler, but they demoed a 32-core Threadripper 2, which will ship this year. And this is not really super surprising because the 32-core Threadripper 2 is basically epic, but in, in desktop configuration. I think you have to admit that AMD won 
Computex. Yeah. Because they're really the only ones that that announced anything of merit. <laughs> yeah. They kind of yeah. been winning a lot lately. Yeah. Seems like to me. Yeah, it's uh, you know they're probably not winning on the the clock speed wars because I mean, you know, in terms of like single thread performance, they're not they're not there yet. Uh, but in terms of like if you if you need thirty two cores on the desktop, this is probably going to be amazing. And the sixteen core Threadripper, or if it's like two twenty seven hundreds in one package, and you're you're going to get that four point three to four point four, you know, gigahertz single and dual core workload on Threadripper. That is going to be a substantial processor. I mean, that's that's what most people need in a workstation, workstation class system. Now, Epic is still going to be really good. You might be thinking, I think Threadripper is going to eat into Epic, but remember that Threadripper has half the memory channels, and it's a little it's a little different beast than Epic. But that does make it interesting to speculate what's going to go on with with Epic. AMD also uh, released seven nanometer Vega, so. Um, NVIDIA did not release anything. NVIDIA's CEO, in fact, said it's going to be a long time before next-gen GeForce GPUs come out. But he's done that before. Like, he'll do that, and then somebody will come out with an amazing product, and then he'll be like, wow, we got something to do! Well, it's like, I mean, why would they release anything right now when they're just making money hand over fist? But what I really respect what NVIDIA does here, because they have a history of not hyping it up. And this one day it's like, here it is, and you can go buy it. <laughs> and that's the way all of it should be. All this bullshit where it's like, you know, fake it and put it out early and get everybody excited about it. No, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Dude, everybody should follow NVIDIA when they do this kind of thing. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, during the AMD press event, they, uh, the Vega 56 Nano was also released, which is from PowerColor. And so they had a demo of it on stage. But the game that they were playing with Vega 56 Nano was sort of glitching and stuttering in, in its effects. And the guy was, I think the guy noticed it that was presenting it, and he's like, oh, so he switched to the video game that was like a free sync demo. But uh, it is exactly the opposite of what you're saying because it's like, oh my God, hype train, woo! And then NVIDIA's just like, no, let's just do this. And uh, I got to see this on the show floor as well. This is uh, uh, Super Micro was showing me one of their uh, NVIDIA like TensorFlow systems and as configured it was 10U on the rack mount and $100,000 base configuration. Oh, I think we did a story about Is that the V100 yeah. system? Yeah, we did a story about that one. I think it's 400 grand though what they or, so yeah, it, yeah, fully kitted out is 400, 400 grand, but entry level is 100 grand. Like Think the, how many houses with internet you could get around here, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Yeah, you can't, you can't get it for, for less the, than 100K. A, a nice house in the country with internet around here, there is no price. There's no price you can pay <laughs> to get it. Well, yeah, no, it's just not internet. Mm. Ubisoft has uh, said that cloud gaming is going to replace consoles after the next generation. And this is, this okay, so the way that the article explains it here is BS, but there is a way that they could pull that off. Well, they're talking about using the uh, NVIDIA Shield Steam app type of deal, which... Not happening. Yeah, unlikely. But the real, even if we could do it, think about how horrible this would be in concert with net neutrality. <laughs> because Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, all the big names are going to have agreements with all the ISPs and any competitor won't. So <laughs> the peggles of the world can just we, screw off. There would never be a competitor <laughs> who could get into this game. And I'll, the other this thing game. is software as a service. Yeah. Everything becomes software as a service under this. This is the, I mean, I'm not a big console guy, but good Lord, this is bad. Yeah. Bad for the world. Yeah. Now there is a way that this could happen and it's more on the software development side and I'll go off track a little bit here but imagine that you have a game where when you start to play the game it only streams the assets that you need to actually play the game on your local console from a remote system if you're regardless of latency if your internet connection if your download speed is fast enough if for example like when you go to load the first level of Dragon's Lair or whatever and that's only like a gigabyte your loading screen only loads the first gigabyte of, of data. And then while you're actually playing the game, it could be bringing in the rest of it. So you're quote unquote streaming it off the internet, but really it's just a progressive download. And think uh, some Blizzard games, I think, do this. Like Overwatch will let you play it before it's totally done downloading. 
but and you just can't play on maps that it hasn't downloaded yet. But that's not what they're talking about. No. It's, what they're no, talking about yeah. is a much less powerful yeah. terminal in your house. Yeah. And you couldn't do that that way. But what you're describing, imagine how great a world it would be if the only way to get a complete ROM was to 100% a game. Yeah. Yeah. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would also take care of a lot of piracy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you would, you know, people who wanted to 100% a game would be really richly rewarded for recording all those assets. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a segue into this, but uh, Microsoft has sunk its data center off Orkney. So this is a no humans allowed for five years data center that's, that's just in the ocean. Because Microsoft thinks in the ocean is efficient in terms of power utilization and convenient in terms of space utilization. Convenient. Cooling. Cooling is the and big thing. Cooling, yeah. Well, that's what I mean by power, but yeah. So, yeah. they. But the thing is, as the parts die, they won't be hauling it up and fixing them. They're just going to let them die. Yeah. So it's an experiment of, do we save enough on cooling to make up for the fact that as things die, we just have to let them die? And maybe if this works out, we will get more and more data centers that are just being dumped in the ocean. Now, it's crazy. water, there's another aspect of this that I don't think the article talks about, and that is how many bit flips in memory are caused by like stray gamma radiation or cosmic radiation, uh, because that's the thing. And water is a really good insulator from that. So I wonder if the number of bits flipped in memory will be less in this data center because it's surrounded by water. Well, they do talk about Ironically, the moisture in the air is caused by humans, and this will have none of that. So the erosion in the parts will be almost non-existent, even though it's underwater. Hmm. It's going to be interesting to see the data that comes out of this in a few years. I can't remember. Did the article mention where they're dumping it? I like, to imagine, I like to imagine that they just dumped it at a beach. Like, no. So like you're swimming and you can like touch the data center. Now, they chose this town it. not just because... Uh, I think it's like a small town. Nobody cares if you throw something in the ocean. <laughs> but also, this town has completely renewable energy, and they have too much energy. And oh. they're trying to find something to do with it. So Microsoft's like, well, sell a little bit to us, and we'll put data centers <laughs> We'll sink there. a data center yeah. off your coast. That's so bizarre. How, how cool is it going to be when we are reporting on the news headline where it's like, Microsoft data center taken offline when a boat anchor impales the side of the capsule. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> ruining the, canoe. the entire data center. I'll tell you how cool it's going to be. The temperature of the ocean cool. <laughs> Nothing can be as cool as this 3D printed house in the Netherlands. It uh, doesn't completely look bizarre. <laughs> they look kind of like something from Star Wars, really. I kind of like it. I like these kind of weird houses. These are not actually the houses. This is an artist interpretation of what the houses will look like. But yeah, they're going to... And th this is not the 3D print in place thing. They're going to print these at a local university and then take them out and assemble them. But they're going to be for rent. So you can Oh, rent. they're for rent. That's yeah. cool. Usually it's like, you could get this house, but it's, you know, thousands of dollars. And, and it's like uh, lakefront property and real nice. You know, assuming these houses work properly. Seems like that's cool a, that seems like a big if. Yeah. We're you, going to find out. Are you one of the dozens of people that are still using Yahoo Messenger? I'm sorry, I've got some bad news for you. I was a little sad reading this article. Yahoo Messenger is being killed off. It's rapidly approaching, like a month from now. Yeah, July 17. And then they're going to give you, I think, six months to download your contacts and your chat history. And then after that, nothing ever again. Turns out the only people using Yahoo Messenger are bots and spammers. <laughs> as, a, they, as a kid, I used Yahoo Messenger. When well, I was like everybody did. I mean, yeah. you know, it was the king at that time. They do have something called... Yahoo Squirrel that's coming to replace it. I, there weren't a lot of details about Squirrel. <laughs> oh, who is in charge? The, the uh, asylum. <laughs> is there a squirrel in charge of Yahoo? It's hard <laughs> it could to could be. That would explain it, wouldn't it? Uh, things have gotten out of hand on Reddit again. <laughs> Those gosh darn Were they ever in hand on Reddit? <laughs> no. <laughs> the flight sim maker had, that had threatened legal action over Reddit posts discussing DRM tells Ars Technica there was never any tension to seek any intention to seek action. Did you guys actually read the original posts from this person? Yeah, I didn't really yeah. see what the big deal was. Well, this, this person's kind of condescending. Well, this well, is... This which, is, I mean, that's not a big deal. The big deal is this is the same flight sim company, we did the story, that put the... Uh, the back door. The password sniffer in there. And the idea was 
if you if they figured out you were a pirate somehow, they stole your password, <laughs> which people weren't too happy about. So on the subreddit, they released a new software that was putting files in some Windows folders, and some people were like, hey, wait a minute, what are these files? And this guy said, any discussion that says that we're using DRM that's like malicious is liable and will be acted upon. So I don't know. A password sniffer seems pretty malicious to me. Well, that's yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, it's being dumped in like they like have a hit, folders. That's like somebody getting out of prison for robbery and being like, "Any of you people calls me a thief, I'm gonna sue you." <laughs> they also named it. I can't remember what the name of the file was, but it's something very similar to like an actual file Windows uses. Yeah, Windows. it was definitely part of a DRM that tried to hide itself from the user. I'm pretty sure the FBI is holding that WannaCry guy for less serious things than what the, this company has done with the password <laughs> sniffer. Well, and the, the posts from this guy, too, he was like, I don't actually work with these guys. Like, I'm too generous to take a salary. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you. Well, this is probably one of those situations where just one guy was off the leash. But it does seem like a terrible company, the way they try to do DRM. Yeah. Coinbase is in the news. Coinbase is uh, acquiring a financial services firm to become an SEC-regulated broker-dealer. This one, I think I missed this story. So Coinbase, of course, you know, they're, they're one of the, you know, legit Bitcoin traders that are available in the U.S. after pretty much everybody else has been shut down, all the yeah. old people. I think they might be the only one that you can really have any kind of confidence in. But they play ball with the IRS, and they, there's not, that's not always great. So they're going to become a full-fledged trader with the SEC. They're going to be into securities, too. What could go wrong? You're probably going to be able to trade stocks. Now, the really interesting thing about this story, they said they had plans to tokenize traditional securities. So, like, Google tokens based on the stock? I don't know exactly how that would work. Hmm. But I, you presume it would use some kind of blockchain? I, it sounds kind of far-fetched, but... I don't know. Maybe a new way to trade stocks. Do you think we'll see some? Do, do you think we'll see the SEC adopt a blockchain type technology to stop high frequency traders? Because that would be neat. I don't think the SEC has any interest <laughs> in stopping high frequency trading, but they should. It would be real easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> no one can solve this problem, though. What will we do? It is impossible. It's an impossible to solve problem. Oh, this next story. This 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 made me. This is another one of those stories that just made me more and more angry the more I read it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Monsanto is uh, has been acquired by Bayer, the people that make aspirin, among other things, a lot of drugs, as it turns out. And Monsanto, the Monsanto name is going away, but not the products of the legacy. This well, is definitely a, a Blackwater move. <laughs> this is a marketing move. This is. Oh yeah. There's some bad stuff associated with the name Monsanto, some. so we're just gonna get. <laughs> so we're just gonna get rid of that name, but not change anything else. Yeah, you know that thing that's maybe killing us all slowly. Don't worry about Let's that. Let's pretend that never happened. And Bayer, who doesn't love aspirin? <laughs> Everybody loves aspirin. <laughs> that's what you take when Your you have a heart attack. <laughs> Hell, baby aspirin. You got a heart patients, any kind of pain. It's the miracle drug. And let's just forget about all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. the, we did a, a story not long ago that the, the new AI robot-based agriculture is really threatening the you know agriculture spraying everything with poison business model. So Monsanto might have been in some trouble later on. That might have been part of why they're selling out. Oh, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, if the technology is so cheap and ubiquitous, how is that not better than chemically controlling those kind of things? Yeah, and you can use the seeds from year to year, and they're not. You know, I just well, I didn't have the story. I just saw it today. Two new studies are talking about how CRISPR might absolutely be leading to cancer, like one hundred percent. And uh, I don't know if Monsanto uses that kind of gene manipulation, but they certainly modify those crops. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Mod modifying the crops through selective breeding is probably okay, but other things other than that, I don't know if that's a proven track I'm not record. sure that's how they do the Roundup Ready stuff. No, I, no, I don't think so. Our last story, Mars, the Mars rover. Remember the Mars rover? Because the Mars, it was only supposed to work for 90 days, and it's on what, like Sol 900 and something? It's been there a while. Well, this one's Curiosity. That's not the newest one, is it? I think it is. Is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, they found organic matter in an ancient lake bed. So Curiosity digs up carbon compounds that could be food for life and sediments that formed three billion years ago. So this is sort of another. Uh, they talk a little bit about methane too, because 
the interesting thing about methane is that we don't know of, I I don't know if this is true or not, but I I'm given to understand that I that methane normally breaks down. Like it methane is not a gas that sticks around naturally for a long time. It'll just chemically decompose. And there's more methane on Mars than can be accounted for through chemical processes, which suggests there's some type of organic process. So uh, what you're telling me, I think, I'm reading between the lines. You're saying there's a subterranean race on Mars. <laughs> and one of, them, one of them came to the surface and dropped a sandwich one day and forgot to pick it up. And that's the, what we're finding here. They were sending messages to Tesla the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain some of his tweets. The that's, slow descent into that's, madness. That's Musk. Now, oh, yeah. organic matter alone does not guarantee that there was ever life on Mars. Could have been some sort of... Uh, you know, extraterrestrial, like a comet or something, carrying it. Yeah. But if you're a if you're a life on Mars kind of person, you got to be excited about this one. That is kind of crazy that we found amino acids in comets. Like that's another thing that's like, why would there be amino acids in comets? That's sort of interesting. Eh, you know, there's a there's a giant god machine launching <laughs> amino acid laced comets at the center of the universe and. Whenever it hits an Earth-like, you get life. <laughs> One god's amino acid life-giving comet is another that's god's a, relativistic kill vehicle. We're basically, that's basically their waste product. <laughs> god poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes our monetization if we hadn't managed to. Yeah, I don't know. Check out our Computex coverage. There's a lot more hardware news in the Computex coverage. I don't know what to tell you. And tomorrow, uh, I think business and robots and a healthy nonsense we section. We have a very healthy nonsense the section. The nonsense <laughs> section is a little, a little, and it should be even more nonsensical with my sleep deprivedness. So be sure to watch. Mm-hmm.